Namaste. So today we're going to continue our discussion on the bhavas, ecstatic transcendental emotions, with the vyabhichari bhavas. Vyabhichari bhavas are quite extensive, and so we're going to have to break this into two parts so it doesn't get too long. Hereafter, the 33 Vyabhichari Bhavas will be described. They are called Vyabhichari Bhavas because they apparently move Charanti against the Stai Bhava while assisting it in a distinctive way, Vishesha Abhimukhyena. Now, we've encountered this before, where when a flow encounters an obstacle, it creates a vortex. And the vortex is an attempt to move against the flow of the energy. But what it does is it winds up actually enhancing it, makes it more piquant, more intense, deeper, and more satisfying. The Vyabhichari Bhavas reveal themselves by words, by eyebrows, and other bodily parts, and by external actions, anubhavas, that arise from overwhelming emotions, sattva, since they set in motion, sancharayanti, the course of the sthai bhava. They are also called sanchari bhavas. So the terms vyabhichari bhavas and uh, sanchari bhavas are used interchangeably. They're pretty much exact synonyms. The Vyabhichari Bhavas, rising and falling like waves in the sweet ocean of the Sthai Bhava, increase the Sthai Bhava and then merge into it. So just like when you make sweet rice, kheer, you add a little bit of black pepper in the beginning. Huh? You fry the black pepper in rice, in ghee, and this increases the flavor, even though the predominating flavor is sweet. The slight taste of black pepper increases that sweetness, makes it more piquant, penetrating, and intense. So in the same way, the Vyabhichari Bhavas, although they seem to go against the bliss of the Sthai Bhava, actually enhance it because they give some contrast. And in that contrast, the Stai Bhava appears sweeter. So, what are the 33? <laughs> the Vyabhichari Bhavas are as follows. One, self-disgust, Nirveda. This could be self-disgust arising from great sorrow from separation, hatred, or worrying about doing what should not be done or not doing what should be done. And this is called nirveda. In this state, worry, tears, change of color, feeling of lack of qualification, dainyam, and sighing occur. Though it is inauspicious, Bharata Muni has mentioned nirveda as the first Vyabhichari Bhava, since it is the Sthai Bhava for Shanta Ras. And now we're going to discuss Shanta Ras along with the other uh, Sthai Bhavas in a later section of this series. But just for now, take our word for it. Next is remorse, Vishada. Remorse or despair arising from failure to attain one's desired object from failure to accomplish a task, from occurrence of a disaster, or from committing an offense is called vishada. In this state, there is worry, search for a means of accomplishment, search for assistance, weeping, moaning, heavy breathing, change of color, and drying of the mouth. So this remorse is a type of anxiety that arises in the course of disappointment in reaching one's desired goals. Next, thinking oneself unqualified, dainyam or dinata. 
Thinking oneself a low creature because of sorrow, fear, or offense is called dynyam or dinata. In this state, there are words of flattery, feebleness of the heart, impurity of the heart, thinking various thoughts, and immobility of the limbs. Then there's debility, glani or mlani. Debility is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. When Arjuna is feeling unable to fight in the beginning, uh, Krishna calls it glani. Huh? Glanir Bhavati Bharata. How has this weakness, this inability, come upon you? Ojas, whose ruling deity is the moon, produces strength and nourishment in the body. When it decreases by physical exertion, mental anxiety, or the sexual act, the weakened state is called glani or mlani. In the state of glani or languishing, there is trembling, indecision, change of color, becoming thin, and throwing glances here and there. So this confirms what we have always said, which is that these scriptural pastimes include sexual activities. This is Tantra. And the origin of Tantra is lost in antiquity. It's much, much older than the Puranic texts that even describe it. So Tantra is actually fundamental to all that we know about devotion. And it's really the primal spiritual path based on the goddess. Then number five is fatigue, shrama. Fatigue arising from losing the way, dancing or amorous activities is called shrama. In this state, sleep, perspiration, rubbing the body, yawning and heavy breathing appear. So again, we should understand that these pastimes in the spiritual world include sexuality. What is the big deal about this? It's that the colonials, both Islamic and Christian, tried to superimpose their morality on Indian religion. And so there has emerged a culture of denial of the original roots of devotion, which are tantric. And this is a great tragedy because it reduces the people's ability to actually attain spiritual realization. Then number six is rapture, mada. Rapture that destroys all sense of discriminating power is called mada. There are two types, arising from intoxication and arising from extreme transformations due to love. In this state, there is stumbling while walking, uncoordinated movement of the limbs, and uncoordinated speaking. The eyes roll and the face becomes red. So <laughs> these are wonderful symptoms of rapture. And rapture can be experienced very easily by meditation. But in this context, it's rapture due to activities of love. And then there is pride, garva. Treating others with contempt due to one's own good fortune, due to youthful beauty, due to one's good qualities, due to taking shelter of the Lord, or uh, sue to attaining one's object of love is called garva or haughtiness. In this state, there are joking words, not giving answers by one's own choice, showing off one's body, concealing one's intentions, and not hearing others' words. So this is often the case with beautiful young people, uh, that they show ageism or uh, they uh, display contempt for others who are, in their opinion, not as good-looking as they are. Number eight is apprehension, sankha. Apprehension due to committing theft, offense, or others' cruelty is called sankha. In this state, there is drying of the mouth, change of complexion, glancing in all directions, and hiding oneself. Then there's sudden fear, trasa. 
The disturbance arising in the heart from lightning, fearful creatures, or a loud sound is called trasa, terror. In this state, a person grasps nearby objects for support. His hairs stand on end, he quivers, becomes paralyzed, and wanders about. Number 10 is confusion of the mind, avega. Confusion of the mind is called avega. It is of eight types arising from dear things, detested objects, fire, wind, rain, calamity, elephants, or enemies. In avega arising from dear objects, standing of the hair on end, words of affection, fickleness, and rising to one's feet appear. In avega arising from detested objects, falling on the ground, shouting and wandering about appear. In avega arising from fire, the actions are retreating, shaking of the body, closing the eyes, and tears. In avega from wind, the actions are covering the body, walking swiftly and rubbing the eyes. In avega arising from rain, the actions are running, holding an umbrella, and crouching down. In avega arising from calamity, the actions are discoloration of the face, astonishment, and strong shaking of the body. In avega from elephants, the actions are fleeing, strong shaking, trasa, terror, and looking behind. In avega arising from enemies, the actions are taking up armor and weapons, abandoning one's house, and going elsewhere. So these different types of fear are there in even in spiritual pastimes. It's not that when we become spiritually realized, we become free from all external disturbances. No. But those external disturbances act as an impetus, sanchari, for taking shelter of the Ishta Devata. Next is insanity, unmada. Confused understanding caused by extreme bliss, calamity, or separation is called unmada, insanity. In this state, the actions are loud laughing, dancing, singing, useless actions, prattling, running, shouting, and performing activities opposite to what are usually performed. So this extreme bliss can actually cause insanity. But that's okay, <laughs> because the insanity is out of love. And the bliss produced by this uh, apparently insane state of mind uh, is just beyond compare. Twelve is epilepsy, apasmriti, a condition of almost total lack of consciousness arising from disturbance of the datus, bodily air, due to grief is called apasmara, epilepsy. In that state, there is falling to the ground, running about, pain in the limbs, confusion, shaking of the body, foaming at the mouth, flailing at the arms, and shouting. Next is sickness, vyadi. Sickness, such as fever generated from extreme sorrow at hearing of contempt for God by the demons, or from separation or other events, is called vyadi, or disease. But in this book, vyadi refers to symptoms caused by an emotional state, rather than from disturbance of the datus arising from that separation. In this state, paralysis, slackness of the limbs, heavy breathing, anxiety, and fatigue occur. Then there's loss of internal awareness, moha. A complete lack of awareness, internal inaction, arising from joy, separation, fear, or lamentation, is called moha. In this state, there is falling on the ground, absence of sense perceptions, wandering about, and inactivity. Then there are death-like symptoms, mriti. Giving up life because of grief, sickness, fear, beating or exhaustion is called mriti, death. 
In this state, unclear speaking, change of bodily color, feeble breathing, and hiccups occur. And finally, the last one in this video is sloth, alasyam. Lack of enthusiasm to perform activities because of satiation or fatigue, even though one has the ability to do them, is called alasya. In this state, stretching the limbs, yawning, disgust with work, rubbing the eyes, laying down, fondness for sitting down, exhaustion, and sleep occur. So we see that although spiritual life is totally blissful internally, externally, sometimes there are apparently negative symptoms. And these are called Sanchari Bhavas or Vyabhichari Bhavas. And so we should understand when we see these symptoms in advanced devotees, that they're not indicative of a problem or negativity, but they are an expression of internal bliss. One time, my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada, was very sick. Apparently, <laughs> very sick. And um, still, he maintained his daily schedule, very rigorous schedule of three or four hours sleep and writing and lecturing and uh, counseling his students and so on. And the devotees were saying, why don't you rest? Uh, why, why don't you take it easy? And he, he just looked at them and smiled and said, you don't understand transcendental ecstasy. And similarly, in our dealings with neophyte devotees and other people uh, of lesser realization, uh, we often find that our bodily symptoms and activities are misunderstood. And this is because of a poor fund of knowledge. So one should understand these Vyabhichari Bhavas as being an important part of the life of devotion. And in the next episode, we'll look at the rest of them. And we'll also, uh, in a third episode on Vyabhachari Bhavas, understand uh, why sometimes they're manifest, sometimes unmanifest, sometimes detectable, and sometimes indetectable. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.